Hee-haw, Krazai, uh, Zechariah. And the book right before the book of Malachi, the second to last book in the Old Testament. And we are continuing our journey through the Old Testament. And we get to the book of Zechariah. And the book of Zechariah is an interesting book. And I don't know about you, uh, when I think of Zechariah, I think of myrtle trees. I think of a flying scroll. And I think of... Wow, there's a lot to this book that I don't know. And uh, by the way, that's probably the way all of us are through portions of the Bible. And part of the importance of these through the Bible uh, studies that we're going through is to help us to become more familiar with these books so that as we read them on a regular basis, uh, we're getting more from them. And uh, there's going to be an introduction. We're going to read verses 1 through 6 here. And it's an introduction to the whole book, the whole 14 chapters. And then you'll see from chapters uh, 1 verse uh, 7 to chapter 6, uh, Zechariah is going to have a dream or a vision. And there's going to be eight portions of that vision. I break it up into eight. You could break it up into ten. But uh, we're going to break it up into eight portions of that dream. And then uh, chapters 7 and 8 is really a conclusion to the book. And you still have chapters 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And I put it as a bonus chapters, uh, because part of the uh, bonus chapters is sort of a little extra uh, that the Lord gives you that tell us about uh, the Messiah, and it tells us about the future kingdom that's going to be set here on earth. So you can, if you can stand in honor, uh, honor of God's word, we're going to try to read these first six verses. I'll read the first verse, we'll read every other verse until we get to verse number six. Zechariah, starting in chapter 1, verse 1. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Ido, the prophet, saying, The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so he hath dealt with us. Wow. Lord of hosts, your fathers, uh, son of Ido or Ido. Uh, the book of Zechariah is an amazing book. It also has a lot of prophecies and a lot of thoughts that can confuse a lot of people. We're going to try to make some sense out of the confusion, you might say. And I believe this Bible study will help you immensely as you read the book of Zechariah. Before we go any further, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we'd love you. And do thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for people that love you enough to be interested in studying a book like the book of Zechariah. Amen. And in truth, the book of Zechariah is a gift to me. It's a gift to our church. And it's something you wanted us to have. I pray that you help us to be able to stop over the next few minutes and learn from this precious book, Lord. Help me to decrease and you to increase in Jesus' name. Amen.
Zechariah, and uh, we think about it with me for just a moment. The book of Zechariah happens after the Babylonian captivity. We know that the nation of Israel uh, became a divided nation. It had King Saul, King David, King Solomon, and then all of a sudden some problems happened. There was a civil war, you might say, and the northern kingdom broke off and was now the kingdom of Israel, and the southern kingdom was the kingdom of Judah. Northern kingdom, bad king after bad king after bad king after bad king after bad king, and it seemed after bad king. And eventually, God had sent prophets saying, get right with God or God will destroy. And sure enough, the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed by the Assyrians. Southern kingdom, yeah, some good kings and some bad kings, and uh, they lasted a little bit longer, but same thing happened. They digressed into sin. God sent prophets, said, get right with God or God will destroy. And sure enough, the Babylonians were used of the Lord to, uh, to destroy Jerusalem, destroy the temple, and carry the children of Israel off into bondage into the 70-year captivity. Now, after 70 years, Babylon, uh, God used the Persians. The Persians came in and conquered Babylon, uh, set up a new empire. It was a little bit different than Babylon. Persia decided that they were going to allow uh, the people, the nations that they conquered to serve their own gods, and they were looking to get a blessing from the gods of those people. And so they allowed the children of Israel to go back to Jerusalem. They allowed uh, the children of Israel to go back to the Promised Land. The sad thing is, is about, uh, you think, millions of people in Babylonian captivity and only 50,000 people chose to go back. And they went back. And sure enough, we learned last week in the book of Haggai, they began to rebuild the temple. Uh, they were met with persecution from the Samaritans. The money was an issue. And they left off the building of the temple. But God sent a prophet, Haggai, to encourage them to get on building again. And every once in a while, we need a prophet to get up and say, let's continue Amen. building that building out over there. Amen. Amen. And uh, they did. Now, Haggai and Zechariah are contemporaries. They both happen after the Babylonian captivity. Uh, we'll see that uh, Zechariah seems to be a young man. It seems like Haggai was an older man. But I want to sort of draw you an outline of the book of Zechariah. Let me see here. Is this the Z? All right, Z, E, C, all right, C, H, is that right? And A, is that right? R, I, Something's missing right here. Ugh. That's going to be a lot better. Zachariah. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Now, I have tried to think about how to outline the book of Zechariah, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time drawing this with a lot of mercy from this wonderful congregation, uh, because this congregation is very merciful. <laughs> Maybe not as merciful as I've been hoping, uh, but we're going to try this. And uh, Zechariah, there are 14 chapters. I'm going to put 14 right here. We'll move that down. 14. Oh, this is really not starting off like a thought here. But a couple extra seconds won't hurt that much, hopefully. Okay, 14. Let me see if I can get 14 right here. 
And I know, I know, oh. And I just want you to say, ooh. Okay, not ah, not ah, ooh. Okay, now we find an introduction. So I'm going to put 14, but I'm going to put in, uh, introduction. Okay, there we go. An introduction is going to happen in chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 6. And then I'm going to draw this line right here. And this is going to help you through this whole study right here. The second part is going to be chapter uh, 1, uh, verse number 6, all the way through chapter uh, 6. Now in this, we're going to look at eight visions or eight dreams. And so if I draw this, this will be my dream cloud right here. One, oh, two, one, two, oh, this is working great. Three, uh, four, help me, five, huh, six, seven, eight. Okay, now in these dreams, we're going to see... Uh, four horsemen. Now, I was going to try to, I got my picture right here just to, you do, 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 uh, okay, I could draw a mean bull right here. Uh, there we go. Mm, moo. Uh, but there's four horns, four horns, okay? What are those? I don't know what those are, but those are supposed to be horns, okay? Uh, then we're going to find a ruler or a measuring of the uh, city of Jerusalem. This is a ruler, and so this is a, supposed to be a ruler, Okay, just to help you out to know what this one is, I'm going to write a ruler right there, okay? That is a ruler. Okay, what is that? A ruler. Thank you. Some of you have some good imagination. And uh, now we're going to have uh, a, oh, wow. Okay, this is good. This is good. Okay, smiley face right here. <laughs> That's a beard. <laughs> uh, That's a hat right there. There's an arm right there. And these are dirty spots right here. There's a, uh, a man that has uh, dirty garments. He's going to get a change of clothes and a change of a hat. I know, I know, have some imagination here, okay? Uh, then we're going to have some, uh, a sort of a candle. And one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. That's a candle in between. These are two olive trees, okay? Those are olives on there. Uh, olive trees right there, two olive trees. And sort of a candle. Now, on top of this, there's a bowl. So it's a candlestick in between two olive trees. It has a bowl on top. We're moving on. Then, uh, this is interesting. This, uh, this is a flying scroll. Okay. These are some flying marks. That means it's flying. And so, ask Zachariah. Uh, what is this? He says, it's, uh, it's a flying scroll. And uh, yeah, that's a flying scroll. Uh, then we have a lady in a ephah, in uh, like a basket looking thing right here. I'm just going to put a lady in here. And uh, just that's a lady in a basket, okay? A lady in an ephah. And then the last one is we're going to have a chariot. Let me see here. Chariot. Okay. There we go. Uh, horse. Okay. Dum, dum. Dum, 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 dum. Okay. It's, it's okay, Sister Cena. I'm trying. I'm trying. The thing is, it's not done. It's not done. And I'm running out of slight room here. So here's what we're going to do here. And, oh. Then you have, here we go, conclusion. Conclusion in chapters 7 and 8. And uh, there we go. And then you just think the rest of it from 9 to 14 
is some extra chapters, some uh, bonus chapters, okay? So I'll put this up here. We're going to go through this, and I believe it will, I hope it helps you. <laughs> I think sometimes my pastoring and my teaching hurts you all, and uh, <laughs> praise the Lord for that. Go to chapter one with me, and uh, we're going to look at this. We're going to look at the introduction. You can see on here the introduction, okay? That is chapter 1, verses 1 through uh, 6 here. And in the introduction, let's look at the first verse. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, that's the king of uh, Persia, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Ido, the prophet, saying. Now, uh, Zechariah, it gives a lineage there, his dad and his grandfather right there. But Zechariah... There's 24 Zacharias mentioned in Scripture. That's a lot of Zacharias. When you read Zechariah, it's not always the same Zechariah. This is one of the 24. You find this same Zechariah in the book, of, uh, the book of Ezra, in chapter 5, verse 1. Zechariah, the son of Ido, uh, or Ido, however you want to say that. And it looks like they skip over to his grandpa right there, but it gives his lineage. It seems that Zechariah was of the priesthood. And when you figure this out, he's a priesthood, but he's also a prophet. Now, if you remember, many of the priests were not very godly during that time and before the fall of Babylon. It's nice to find a priest that's actually a prophet. That's a good thing. If you look at Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4, if you look at this really quick, I want to mention that it seems Haggai was old, Zechariah was young. So we have a priest, prophet here in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 4. And said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited. But speaking to Zechariah, it seems that Zechariah is a young man. By the way, I want to just say, uh, just because you're old doesn't mean the Lord, or young doesn't mean the Lord can't use you. And somebody says, well, when I'm 30 or 40 or 50 or 60, I'll, I'll finally be used of the Lord. And they keep waiting and keep waiting and keep waiting and keep waiting. Hey, God can use the young. God can use the old. Amen. Amen. And it's so important, you teenagers, you young kids like that. I was so excited. Abby Faulkner led somebody to Christ, and I was Amen. rejoicing. And Abby's just a young girl right there. But young or old, you can do something for the Lord. Amen. Now, we go a little bit further, and we look at chapter 1, verses 2 through 6. And you're going to see a term, your fathers. Your fathers. Look with me. In verse uh, number 2, the Lord hath been sort of pleased with your fathers. Therefore, say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn to you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear. They, the fathers, did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Verse 5, Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to your doings, so, so he hath dealt with us. Now, you see that term, your fathers, your fathers, your fathers, your fathers, your fathers. He was remembering back. Most of the people that traveled back to Jerusalem had not been to Jerusalem before. Uh, most of them had been born in Babylon. And he's saying, your fathers, they're the ones that rebelled at me. They're the ones that had rebelled when they're in Babylon. They're the ones that had not listened to the prophets. Your fathers did not do right. Now your fathers were punished because of it. And learn from your fathers. Understand that your fathers, when they didn't serve the Lord, they were not right. By the way, that goes for all of us. Right. We see many people all around us not serving the Almighty God. And some of you say, well, if uh, they're not serving the Lord, then, you know, I really don't have to serve the Lord either. Uh, you could go on, and well, they don't have any standards, so I don't have to have any standards either. Uh, they, don't, they don't follow the Bible, so I don't have to follow the Bible. No, that's not true. Amen. Boy, it doesn't matter what your fathers have done. If right is right, then do right. And it's some, oh boy, I only got one amen out of that. That is a good truth right there that's worthy of a sermon. But it doesn't matter what other people have done. Amen. Boy, many people have not served the Lord. Boy, if your mom and dad don't serve the Lord, serve the Lord anyways. Grandpa and grandma didn't serve the Lord, serve the Lord anyways. If your pastor doesn't draw very good, serve the Lord anyways. Amen. Amen. Your fathers, that's a great truth right there. Often we want to serve the Lord because everybody else is doing it. But there, might, there just might come a time, maybe coming to a city near you, where many people turn their backs on the Almighty God. 
and you can see all around it, well, nobody else served the Lord, then why do I have to? I, uh, I don't have to either. No, serve the Lord anyhow. Now, we'll continue on. You, you see this in this term, Lord of hosts. Did you see that? Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts, Lord of hosts. The, the term Lord of hosts is found in the Bible ah, like 245 times. Wow. It's interesting, the book of Isaiah uh, has that term the most. Isaiah has that term 53 times. The book of Zechariah has it the second most. It's 46 times. The Lord of hosts. And uh, you could think of Lord or Lord of armies, a host of ar an army. And, and uh, you think of it, it's found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 3 first. It's found quite often, but you could think of God of armies, God of victory, uh, God who's going to win in the end, and uh, the Lord of hosts. And praise God, our God is going to win. Uh, in the end, we're on the winning side. You said that in that prayer, but it's true, Brother Motichka. Sometimes it seems like we're living in a defeated uh, time where everything's going bad, but in the end, we're on the winning side. Amen. Man, we're going to have one day and see the Lord coming back or we'll see Him come back on the Mount of Oz. It says that in Zechariah chapter 14, where all the nations are going to be gathering against a, a God in the city of Jerusalem, and we win. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, the, uh, the winning side, amen. Now, we're going to get to the second part. You see these clouds right there. Have you ever had a dream? <laughs> I don't know about you. Some of my dreams can be very interesting. I was dreaming the other day about our new building, and I walked in that building in my dream, and we still weren't finished. Uh, but in my dream, we were doing some interesting things, Brother Mike, and I was looking at here at some of the things you were doing. And uh, Brother Payton, some of the designs you were designing. And I had a question mark about what was going on right there in my dream. Uh, dreams can be interesting, can they not? Uh, we've all had dreams where we wake up and we say, praise God, that was a dream. Have we not? <laughs> praise God. Uh, now, I don't think Zachariah said, praise God, I had a dream right here. But his dream is interesting. And we try to make some stuff. Look at this, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, this is the first one where we have the four horsemen. But I, I want to just spend just a moment right here, uh, the four horsemen. And uh, I saw by night, verse 8, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom, and behind him there were, uh, him were their red horses speckled in white. Then said I, oh, my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. Verse 10. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord hath sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And they answered the angel the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth and be Hold all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. And you continue this, continue on verse 12. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years? Three score, three score, a score is twenty, three score and ten is seventy. It's saying your Jerusalem has been dilapidated, seemingly forgot for seventy years. And you'll see this. Uh, verse 13, and the Lord answered uh, the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. Uh, verse 15, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. Okay, in this, you're going to notice Jesus said, I see the distress. I see the problems. I have not forgotten about Jerusalem. I am coming back. He didn't say when, and uh, everything's going to be okay. And so he's looking at the problems of Jerusalem. Jerusalem had some problems. It was still in distress. Everything wasn't put back together yet. Uh, but and it was the part of the dream was saying, it's okay. The Lord knows the problem. He walks to and fro. He sees all of this. And he's going to come back, and he's going to take care of the problems. By the way, hallelujah, he does. Amen. Boy, he knows your problems. He knows my problems. He knows all about that building that we're building right there. He's got it under control. And he hasn't forgotten about you. He hasn't forgotten about me. Some of these people that were worried a little bit about Jerusalem, is he actually going to take care of the city? Yes, he is. It may not be your timing, but it's his timing is always the right timing. Well, you got a problem in your life. You call on the name of the Lord, and it doesn't seem like he's answered. He's heard you. He can answer that prayer. He can take care of it. Don't uh, lose sight of our all-knowing, all-powerful God. He is in control. Amen. Amen. Hey, man, how 
Thank you, Brother Bob. Boy, maybe you don't have any problems. But when you have a problem in your life, know that the Lord does care and he is in control. Okay, uh, we go to the second vision right here, the four horns. Go to Zechariah uh, chapter 1, verses 18 through 21. And uh, verse 18, Then lifted I up mine eyes and saw and behold four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Okay, uh, simply put, that's Babylon and Assyria. They scattered them. Okay, the horns represent Assyria and Babylon. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, What come these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. You could say that uh, four other horns came, which represented Persia. God used Persia to take care of Babylon. And we see that God took care of them. They were out of captivity, and it allowed them to go back to Jerusalem. We see that. Okay, the four horns vision. Continue on. Look at this one in chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Uh, we'll see a ruler. You see my ruler up there? And um, this is interesting. I lifted up mine eyes again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, Where, well, whither goest thou? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem. Okay, go a little bit further, verse 4. And said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Now, just stop right there. He's measuring the walls. He's saying one day this Jerusalem is going to be a city without walls and they don't need walls because I'm going to be a wall of fire about them. I'm going to take care of the city. By the way, that's the future. Uh, one day God will uh, surround Jerusalem or encompass Jerusalem. There'll uh, be a new temple and praise God. Uh, we're going to see Jesus, uh, the thousand year millennial reign of Christ, where we'll rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. It's going to be no walls need him because he's going to be the protection. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's that. Let's move on. Look at this next one. Um, I want you to see verse number, chapter three, verses one through 10. Uh, these 10, chap uh, 10 verses here. And he showed me Joshua the high priest, and it's interesting, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem to rebuke thee. Verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Verse 4. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee uh, with a change of raiment. And uh, we go a little bit further. Oh, look at verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt uh, keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee uh, places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, uh, Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, uh, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. Now, there's a lot there. That's the book of Zechariah. Okay. Uh, old garments, got new garments. Praise God. We could look at that, that God takes care of you. And uh, you could look that he get a new garments when we're saved by the blood of Jesus. And it mentions the branch there. And there's a lot of thoughts there. And he commands that Joshua to do right. And by the way, praise God for Jesus saving us. Amen. But after we're saved, we ought to do right. That's right. Uh, not to go to heaven because it's the right thing to do. Well, uh, trying to quickly go through here, I want you to see this two olive trees. And a famous verse in the Bible is found in this section of scriptures, chapter 4 is the whole olive trees, and look, look at this. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I, I have looked, and behold, a, a candlestick all of gold with a bull upon the top of it. Pastor, what does that look like? Looks exactly like my picture. <laughs> okay? That's what it looks like. And his seven lamps therein, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it. Uh, verse 4, what are these, my Lord? Verse 5, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord, I don't know. 
Uh, then verse 6, look at this. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not, re read this with me if you see this, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And that's such a great reminder in all that we say, think, or do. We are weak. He is strong. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you wreck. But we have to get in the yoke with the Lord. And it's not by might nor by power. It's not by you. It's not by me. It's the Lord. And we need to be constantly reminded of the people that people are looking around at Jerusalem, looking at all the problems, saying, how are we going to do this? You're not. God can. God can. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How are we going to reach uh, Hampton Roads with the gospel? Well, we can't, but God can. And it's so important for us to never forget the power of the Almighty God. Hey, well, it's impossible in my family. Well, no, it's not with God. Uh, well, I can't do it. Well, you can do all things through Christ which strengthen me, you. And you think about that in your school. Boy, you got problems. you got people picking on you because you're a Christian. Listen, you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. And he can use you in a great way. Continue on. and uh, Yowzers. Look at chapter 5. It's, it's a big flying roll. <laughs> this is so fun. Uh, verse 1. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. <laughs> I don't know about you. I read that. I laugh every time. And a flying roll. What do you see? A flying roll. But look at how big this thing is. The length thereof of 20 cubits and the breadth thereof of 10 cubits. That's a big flying roll. It's just big, right? Okay. It's, I put that in my notes just to let you know. It's a big flying roll. Verse 3. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, for every one that stealeth shall be cut off. And really, it's a curse of sin. And by the way, when you sin, sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. There is a curse of sin. And think of that role as a big curse, the curse of sin. Praise God for Jesus, but many people don't need Jesus, and their only hope is Jesus, because the curse of sin is big. Now, you look at this, um, chapter 5, verses 5 through 11 there's a woman in an ephah, and we're going to skip ahead to chapter 6, the four chariots, and uh, then we're going to go over to the conclusion. I want you to go to chapter 7 with me. The conclusion in this book is not the end, <laughs> but it's almost the end. In chapter 7, is it time for God to set up his kingdom? You know, the 70 years are over. Will God come and set up his kingdom here on earth? And... Uh, Look at verse number five. Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? Verse seven. Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited in prosperity and the cities thereof round about her, where men inhabited the south and the plain? And you think about God heard their cry. They did cry, but God heard their cry. It's a reminder saying, hey, in the conclusion, when you cried to the Lord, he heard your cry. Zechariah, I'm the answer to that cry. God heard you and sent me to comfort you, instruct you. So often we, we get in the, the, the pity party. Yeah. Woe is me. I got problems. I cried to the Lord. He didn't hear me. And that's probably their problem right there. They did cry to the Lord, but the Lord did hear them. Their, their timing was not the Lord's time. The Lord was not quite where they wanted him to be yet. By the way, that's why I'm not discouraged about this building over here. Because it, I know it doesn't matter what I want. I wanted seven years ago. But in truth, if I would have had what I wanted seven years ago, it wasn't that. And God's vision is much greater than my vision. God's plan is much better than my plan. Our plan. Amen. And God's plan for these people was much greater. He heard their cry. Then in this next point, point verse number nine, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. And it said, said uh, some instructions here, and there's more to it, but, but we ought to be uh, execute true judgment. We ought to show mercy and compassion to people. And uh, oh, then you look a little bit further, chapter 8. He's going to return to Jerusalem, and he says that, I will be in the midst of Jerusalem, but he didn't tell them when that was going to happen. Now, a couple other things before we're done. There, there's a lot here. I want you to turn over to these bonus chapters, chapter 9. I want, to see, I want you to see two things in chapter 9 
and uh, chapter 11, uh, some prophecy of Christ. This bonus chap material right here, bonus material. Now look at me. We saw the introduction. We saw all these dreams. We saw the conclusion. You can't see the bonus, but it's there. The bonus chapters, okay? In bonus chapter 9, uh, we're going to see a prophecy of the coming Messiah. It's going to tell them that the Messiah is going to come. And you look at chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly. Okay, rejoice greatly. Think about those two words. Rejoice greatly. Show me less like uh, rejoice greatly real quick. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. Now, by the way, when that happened, the prophecy did come. They did rejoice greatly. But listen, says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king hath cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon, the, uh, upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Woo! That's the triumphant entry. Remember, they began to cry out, great is, the God, great is God, and they began to bow down and say hallelujah, uh, and they began to lay palm, uh, uh, palm trees down and, and lay down and worship him. But it's an answer to that prophecy right there. That's a wonderful prophecy that was fulfilled uh, not too long after, a few hundred years later. Go over to chapter 11, if you will. We see the prophecy of Christ's coming, and then we're going to see also a prophecy of his, um, you might say, how did I word this here? prophecy of his rejection. In chapter 11, verse 12, And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly prize that I was pray, uh, prist at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord, and uh, it speaks of the rejection of the Lord. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, just like it prophesied right there. And you can continue on the last few chapters, and it will speak. Oh, we've got to end with this. Go to chapter 40. You've got to see this, and this is where we'll conclude. There's, there's so much here, but this is awesome. Can I say that? Amen. Chapter 14, more bonus material. And you look at chapter uh, 13 and 14, she gives us a glimpse of the future. And uh, chapter 14, let me start reading verse 1. And look at this. Just try to pay attention for this second. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. Now stop real quick. There, there's going to be a seven-year tribulation period, you might say, but at the end of it, Jesus is going to be coming with his own. Amen. He's going to come back. He, he, went, he ascended up into heaven on the Mount of Olives. He's going to descend back onto the Mount of Olives. And the people of Jerusalem are going to be ravished. That whole city is going to be. Uh, but Jesus is coming to win the final victory right between, before the thousand-year millennial of Christ. This speaks of that. And so we get to this point right here. And we get to verse number... Well, let's read verse 3 again. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall, move, uh, uh, shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. And wow! Uh, verse 11, and men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall safely be inhabited. And it's a prophecy that's going to lead into the millennial reign of Christ. The Bible is history written in advance. Amen. Many people doubted the Messiah. They doubted many of these things. But wow, the Bible is wonderful. It's an amazing book that's given to you as a gift. The book of Zechariah has some interesting dreams. It does have some things that are wow. But hopefully, with this basic outline, 14 chapters, I don't, you couldn't even see my pictures. <laughs> it's a good book. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. And God, I pray that you help us to not skip over the book of Zechariah. 
I pray that you help us to realize it is a precious book filled with uh, scriptures that remind us of you, the branch.